Hello everyone, welcome back to my videos. I haven't posted in a while, but as promised, I said I was going to post a video on Tuesday, so that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do here before I start my video is put on my body substance isolation. Because as anyone who is an EMS knows, we always put our BSI on before, pretty much before arriving to a scene, we're going to start taking standard precautions. And that's just to protect ourselves from, from coming in contact with any diseases or anything that might be spread from person to person uh, via airborne or direct contact. It might come as a shock, but I actually bought quite a lot of um, tools to practice at home with. So first off, we have Preston the Mannequin. So I spent $134 on this mannequin, and this specific mannequin is actually really neat for a lot of reasons one of the cool things is you can do the head tilt chin lift uh, with this patient to open up that airway so that you can either do mouth to mask ventilations with a pocket mask or you can use a bvm uh, we also have the cpr feature when you're doing cpr it's really nice when you're practicing to have something that shows you if you're getting to the adequate depth of compressions and that is exactly what the CPR mannequin does. So right here, there's an indicator light. So when I'm doing my chest compressions, there's two green lights right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but um, there's two green lights that tell me that I'm getting to the adequate depth. Now I'm gonna do it where I'm not getting to the adequate depth. You're gonna see a red light right there. And what that red light indicates is that you're not getting to the adequate depth. So now, and also not um, the adequate 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you do it too fast. You're going to get a yellow light right there that indicates you're going way too fast. And then you get the red light indicating you're not even doing it at all. So this is really useful for practicing CPR and opening an airway looking, listening, and feeling, um, just simulating your um, airway management skills. It's just really nice to have on hand. So the next tool I'm gonna to show you is what in EMS we call a BVM or bag valve mask. Basically what this device is used for is we use it with patients who cannot breathe adequately on their own. So what that means is we come on, we arrive on a scene, we have a patient who has a, um, is having a lot of trouble breathing and maybe they get to a point where they can't really do it on their own. So what we would do is we would secure the mask on the face. I'm not gonna actually go through the steps. And then we would secure that. And we might even hook up oxygen to the bag valve mask at 15 liters per minute. And I would secure the airway and have my partner bag at about 12 to 20 respirations a minute. And then this device also came with a pediatric um, mask, so I can use it on a pediatric mannequin too. And this is only for training purposes. It says it right there on the, right there it says training only. So it's really important that we don't use this on a real person. I'm actually testing on airway management next week on my birthday. Um, so basically an oropharyngeal airway is for an unconscious patient with no gag reflux. So basically what that, what that means is the patient will not gag when I put this into their mouth. Uh, and if they do have a gag reflux, I would immediately take this out and prepare to suction because they might vomit on me. So the way you put these in is you face the you face the device away from the tongue and you would put the device until you meet resistance and then you do a 180 turn and follow the curvature of the airway and this prevents the tongue from falling back into the airway thus making a obstruction so this is a really important device and we in EMS use this device quite a lot and um, we've been working really hard in class on putting all these airway adjuncts in we've also been using the combi tubes which it's really important to know how to use those um, in a patient who has um, inadequate breathing and is unconscious. There's a lot of contraindications for that device too and I'll go over that in a separate video. So I do not have the nasopharyngeal airway because as you can tell my mannequin does not have nares that you can access. So that 
I cannot show you guys, but um, I do plan on the future getting a mannequin that I can actually access the airway, especially for when I do paramedic school. So that's basically everything I have, other than what I've shown you guys in the other videos, having a uh, blood pressure cuff that you guys can use to practice on your friends and family. We use this device all the time in EMS. Location for that device, taking someone's blood pressure. Um, it's really important for the paramedic to know what the blood pressure is, because sometimes they need to know that to administer medications, um, you know, via IV or um, IM, whatever it be, it's really important that you know how to use that device and use it accurately, um, especially as a new EMT that's an EMS school, um, listening for the carat cough sounds can be kind of intimidating, um, and I also should suggest getting a nicer um, uh, stethoscope because I just... I just don't like using those crappy stethoscopes because I can't hear anything for crap. So I got a Lippmann Classic 3, which is amazing. It has a dual pediatric adult um, diaphragms. And I even bought a pulse oximeter, which is used for measuring the oxygen saturation levels within the blood. Also trauma shears and a pen light for practicing my secondary assessment where I... Um, I check for pupil function, look in the, the mouth, nose, and ears, and so forth, looking for any drainage or blood. So it's really important that you have these tools and you're practicing. I actually use Preston to practice my rapid assessments, my secondary assessments, and I also, I even, I even talk to him, I, I, get a, I try to get a sample history from Preston. Obviously I have like a sheet that tells me all the information I need. But also, you know, when I'm doing my assessments, I'm talking to myself because when you're in EMS and you're testing out on skills, you're going to have to verbalize everything you're doing. So it's just good to practice these skills now so that when you have to do it in the future in front of other people, you'll be more comfortable with it. So that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys have any other questions about any equipment I have here or where you can buy this equipment, just leave a comment down below or send me a private message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like.